Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the purpose of this bill, as others have outlined, is really to strike that balance between making sure that buildings are safe against earthquakes and also that are not terrifically expensive for the people who've got the buildings. Uh, there are a number of complicated issues around of it, uh, many of which uh, I see on a weekly basis in my own North Shore electorate. In Devonport, we have a number of earthquake-prone buildings which need to be restored to heritage level, uh, and, and that has to, the integrity of the architecture has to be preserved. So, as you would imagine, that presents a number of challenges, uh, many of them rather expensive challenges as well. So what needs to happen is we really have to clarify for people who own these earthquake prone buildings uh, that the, the, really the threshold for defining what exactly an earthquake prone building is, is part of the building earthquake prone, is the whole building needing to be earthquake strengthened. These are the kind of issues that people are grappling with and that they need some leadership on. The timing, of course, is contentious. Um, should we be doing this within a time frame of within 20 years uh, or pushing it out uh, to, a, to a longer limit? There's, there's a number of various viewpoints you could take into account on that one, and I guess affordability comes into play, but again, keeping in, uh, in mind that very important aspect of public safety. Uh, this is a very significant issue, and it has a high level of public interest. It's estimated that between 15,000 and 25,000 buildings across New Zealand could be earthquake-prone. So it's something that we really need to do very carefully. We have to make sure that there are no unintended consequences, so that people are not unfairly penalised, but also that public safety is paramount. So by doing this, we need to move to a system that has a significantly greater role for central government, particularly providing leadership and direction. Uh, we need to make better use of the capability and resources of central and local government. In other words, we all need to work together to make this bill the good piece of legislation that it is. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just before I recognise the Honourable Damien O'Connor, this is to advise the House that this is a split call. I call the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'll speak briefly on this bill.